All right, so thank you all for being here today. My name is Stefan Ellis. I am the UX UI manager for Avnode Group. Uh, UX stands for user experience, so you can think of it mainly as how does a product or feature function and flow, and then the UI piece is user interface, which is mainly how does it look and feel. So what are the, the buttons like, the color contrast, things like that. So that gives you a little background in terms of like the role and kind of what we're doing. So today what I wanted to talk about was the success of Scudero's user-driven design process. So what does that mean? User-driven means that we are really engaged with the people that use our product, our members. We try to get them in as early as possible in the product design discovery process, get their feedback, and let it inform uh, the solutions that we build. So what I'll be talking through today is the process that we used for the Scudero Crew app. Well, which is being featured at the booth uh, this week. All right, so why an app? So that's where we kind of start asking the question, uh, why should we do something? So what we do is collect a lot of feedback from our users throughout the year. We kind of meet weekly and we try to sense what are the general themes that people are saying, what are the priorities, how do we kind of address you know, the challenges that people experience. Another area is to kind of identify which are those key roles. So how do we define these users? How do we set up their personas and better understand what those workflows are? So for the app, we tried to say, who are the main people that will be using this app and what are the problems that they experience? Uh, so first and foremost, the pilots. And their main pain point here is access. So they are not going to be at a desktop. They're usually you know, on the road, and so they need access to that information in a mobile fashion. Flight logs, duty logs, passenger information. For dispatch, communication is the main challenge there. So they have lots of text messages, emails, sending PDFs. Everything's kind of all over the place, so the goal is how can we consolidate it uh, to kind of help them in what they're trying to achieve. And then the other one are owners. So transparency for them. Where are their aircraft? Can they make a request for that aircraft? So you can see we're servicing a wide range of users and just trying to understand the basics of what, that, uh, what those workflows are. So for us, for the app, the main goal was to improve, or in this case, create the mobile experience. So trip sheets, traditionally, often emails as PDFs. So as things change, you get a new PDF and things can kind of cascade from there. So how can we create one single source of truth in terms of what is the information around that trip? Flight and duty logs, same thing. Lots of paper, having to track. Maybe you're out on the road for a week or two and so you don't actually get that information back into the office until well after the plane's been on the road for quite a number of hours. And then expense tracking, many receipts and trying to how do you keep that classified, how do you bucket in a way that makes sense for accounting so that you can kind of build out those reports. So we kind of understood these as kind of the main tasks that people would be uh, kind of executing. All right, so the process here, four simple steps. Uh, we start with interviewing. So this is uh, the first point at which we're kind of engaging users, uh, trying to better understand what the gaps are. I'll talk a little bit more about these in depth. The second process is basically design. So how do we kind of map out what we're going to build and what are the different layers of fidelity that we go through uh, to define what those solutions are going to be. Prototyping, so how can we get to a stage where people can actually interact with our solutions without having to build the code and support the back end to get the right feedback that we need to make sure that we're kind of oriented. Then the last step, uh, testing. Uh, and this is where we kind of engage with people uh, to get that feedback in the real world use case. So let's look at interviews. So here, what do we need to better understand? Uh, so as a software company, we don't have a ton of pilots or dispatchers or private jet owners within the company. So we obviously have a lot of gaps in our knowledge and understanding of how people use the product and what their daily workflows look like. So we're trying to map out what are the questions that we need to ask those people specifically to make sure that we understand the problem that we're solving for. So design, so as I mentioned, this is where we kind of go through several layers of fidelity to say, at a high level, let's map out what this thing needs to do. If we have a schedule, we have a trip sheet, and then we have a flight log, we kind of understand we have those three main pages. So that's one level of understanding, that's one level of mapping to say what is the experience of moving between those gonna look like? What information do we need to show at each of those stages? And how do we prioritize that information? So we're constantly at a very low fidelity level. We talk about whiteboarding and sketches uh, to very high fidelity to say, what is the actual look and feel of the product going to be like? <clears throat> so prototyping. 
Uh, so actually building out the thing, developing it, testing it, releasing it, takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. But to do just the design at a high fidelity to get to a point where people can actually interact with our proposed solution, we can get a lot of real-time feedback um, and use that to quickly iterate through our design process. So what we do is typically build prototypes using just designs. And this is uh, much like a slideshow uh, where you can click on different parts of the image and it will take you to another part to simulate what it might be like if this were the solution. So this way we can get it in the hands of people a lot sooner and make sure that we're kind of constantly reorienting ourselves, moving down the right path. So the last step of that is to actually test the product with real life users in real life situations. So for the app, we were able to engage with actual pilots and pilots who were actually on the road. So we had uh, a really excellent case here of a pilot who was at an airport being uh, sent back home and who was simultaneously testing our design prototype while he's at the terminal, while he's going through the process of checking in through his gate, while he's actually getting on the plane and then sitting down the whole while being on the phone with us, looking at our designs. So we understand the context of this is a real person in a real situation with lots of distractions and other things that they have to manage and multitask. And they're also then still able to execute the tasks as we've designed them for the app. So that tells us that we're kind of on the right path versus only testing in a very sterile, you know, non-real um, non environment. So, all right, so iteration here is really the key. So why we do this is because we want really short, continuous feedback cycles to constantly improve the designs. So you can see we kind of move from lower fidelity to high fidelity. We have examples of early designs, which maybe look at different ways to show that information. How do we prioritize it? Do we have the right features on there? And as we engage with our users and we get the feedback from them, we can constantly evolve that uh, before we ever even get to writing a single line of code. <clears throat> Now, one of the nice things about also being very user-driven throughout this process is that we can map the full feature set of the product before uh, we actually build it. So we want to understand all of the features, even if it's going to take us a year or two to build them all out, how are they all going to interact with each other? How important is expensing versus flight logging versus being able to see the trip details? So that we can create a roadmap to say, here's where we add the minimum you know, value to the user. So we start with the schedule and the details. So let's, let's build that and then start getting some feedback. Then let's move on to flight and duty logs and then start getting some feedback. So there you can see as we continue to engage people, they use the product, we get that feedback. Uh, we have already kind of mapped it out so we can come back to them and say, that's great feedback. We've heard that before. It's on our roadmap for Q2 or Q3. So you can kind of expect it. So I think it builds more trust uh, with the users so that they understand that we know kind of what their priorities are. So as mentioned, some of the other goals down the road uh, being um, you know, things like the owner app, knowing that that's part of the long-term roadmap, uh, quoting other integrations with my world, uh, and really beyond. So uh, yeah, so that's just a small use case for how we design and build products at Skidero. And uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>